When I was five years old, I told my mom that I wanted to be a dolphin veterinarian. She replied, okay, keep working hard, keep studying hard, and when you do, we will throw away the house and put a big label that said, veterinary hospital, we receive dolphin and whales. And I replied, okay. We are talking about the late 80s here, when there were not a lot of marine biologists working in this field in Costa Rica and not veterinarians working in these animals. So how can I make it? How can I be a dolphin veterinarian? The first veterinary school in the world started in France 260 years ago. But veterinary medicine in marine mammals started in the 1960s, being Dr. Sam Bridgeway, the first veterinarian full-time caring of these animals. It took me 14 more years to enter the vet school, but I did. So the first, five, the first part of my dream, check. After five years, they teach us how to be a dog, cat, horse, and cow veterinarian. This was really important because cows have common ancestors with the current dolphin and whales. And here is when my dreams start to come true after hard work and perseverance and a little of star alignment at my favor. When I entered the vet school, I won one scholarship. So I was making some hours assistance. And so one day I was washing some materials and I started to think, why the, why the dolphins come ashore and die? Do they get sick? Do they get brucellosis? This was a really interesting disease, but only happened in cows and other terrestrial mammals. So I asked the same question to my tutor, my boss, who was leaving my tutor for two decades, almost, to, take my, to have my degrees. And so he was working in a computer and look at me and tell me, yes, why? He was recently describing some animal from UK and US. Do you want to read something about it? And I say, yes, of course. This history of marine mammal brucellosis started in 1994, when one female from one aquarium in the US get aborted, and some other animals in the UK stranded with this brucellosis, with this infection. The strandings occur when marine mammals, in this case, come ashore and are unable to return to themselves to deepest waters. Cetaceans in general are considered sentinels of the hell of the oceans. Why? Because they eat what we eat. The lifespan of these animals are similar to humans. And also they are in the high level of the food chain. So they, they, they accumulate some contaminants. So every single animal that come ashore and even death, they have information of their population in, wild, in wildlife. Costa Rica has 35% of the, of the cetacean species around the world, so we're really lucky because we have a lot of biodiversity in these species. The most common species that is running in Costa Rica is the striped dolphin. This is really beautiful species because it has three lines coming out from the eye. This is really important to recognize them. But these animals come ashore having swimming problems and buoyancy problems. They cannot even stay in outside the water if you, if you do not hold them they go into the bottom and they die suddenly. This is really important because the people think in the water, they will return to deepest water and they push them back several times. This is really important because these animals come weak and they need to be outside the water. They are mammals, so they breathe air like us. If they stay in the water, they will drown themselves. So have you realized that terrestrial animals and even humans, if they got sick, we can hide, we can rest, we can sleep. But what happened with dolphin? This is actually a really good question because they cannot. If they belong to a group and you stop, your group probably will left you behind. So, and actually there's another question. They can rest. The answer, yes. But if, if the brain is not working properly, they cannot put half of the brain sleeping, half of the brain resting, which is actually how they have some rest during the day. Um, the damage and the infection of these bacteria even affects their ability to hunt. And this is really important also because these animals come with empty stomachs and empty intestines. That means they cannot hunt for even for days and even weeks. And so they have really put poor body condition. 
The striped dolphins are offshore animals. So if you see them on the beach, you have to think their group belongs are and are miles, miles away from the side of the stranding. The people think, again, if they put them in the water, it's okay. But if you think there are some predators inside in the water that actually maybe are hunting them, and they want to be outside of the water. So this is really important concept to, to think about. So after I read all the information of this disease, I strongly think that this disease was present in the Costa Rican cases. To answer these questions, I had to learn how to take blood samples and other biospecimens. And here is where my dream started to came through. Dr. Charles Manier was visiting Costa Rica for a conference. Some friend of us introduced me to him. And so I remember having his uh, presentation card said, Mold Marine Laboratory, Veterinary Hospital for Dolphin and Whales. I almost cried because actually that uh, hospital exists. So he invited me to visit them, and so I did. I remember the people at the hospital full of joy, really happy to help these animals, sometimes with tired, tired faces, because again, if there's some rehabilitation animal to be whole 24 seven, of course the people get really tired, is really a full time caring animal, so this is, this is really hard work. They really helped me. Actually, for example, Charlie was six feet tall, while I was five. So they even have to drain the water down a little lower. They used that they, they used to because I need to learn how to deal with the animal and work with the animal for the sample um, requirements. There I learned that dolphins can hit, that the dolphins can bite because they are rehabilitation animals and they are going back into the well. Then I won a scholarship for Taiwan and then I learned how to assist to live strandings. So I was ready. I was ready to take the blood samples. And then my first opportunity arrived in Costa Rica. Of course, the striped dolphin is the same species that I told you before. And so I took the blood samples, bring it to the laboratory that two years late, earlier I was thinking about this disease, and it became positive. The second animal, it was possible, positive too. So we decided to develop some tests to know which one and which of these animal cetaceans were positive and which one were negative. We started to describe how this infection, these bacteria work and get infected in other uh, organs, not only in the brain. And so this was the first effort to describe this disease in the tropics. All this information was published at international level and this was really important because uh, in 2003, the World Organization of Animal Health invited us to join an effort to publish some special edition of brucellosis of pork from terrestrial animals, but they invited us to publish about marine uh, brucellosis. So this was really important because it was the first time that this organization published one disease of cetaceans that have public health impact because this disease can be transmitted from, uh, this case, cetaceans to humans. With some other collaborations of, with university um, organizations, we describe how the genetic variation of these bacteria adapt from terrestrial animals to the oceans. And that happened like 60 something years, more, uh, years ago. And this is really important because it can describe how these bacteria adapt to these animals and how this evolution occurred. This infection in cows in different terrestrial mammals do not cause infection in the brain. So understanding the infection in dolphins is important because humans can also have this neurological presentation of this disease. So understanding what happened in dolphins is it gives us some light about the infection in humans. Mathematical models and biological models currently do not include this reproductive uh, disease. And this is really important why, in, if you think conservation of this species, because this model, for example, telling you after hunting 3,000 dolphins, it will recover in 10 years. But what happens if you have in some mortality of this animal with this infection? How many animals die? How many animals get aborted? How many calf, juvenile, even adults that die because of this infection? How many have reproductive problems and how many miscarriage, for example. All these concepts have to be included in these mathematical models because they currently they are not. 
There's another question. How many animals do not come ashore, do not make it to come ashore? How many animals die in the water? And so you think that in impact of this kind of disease in the wildlife population. <coughs> so all this information opened me, opened me more opportunities to help other countries. For example, I'm part of the expert panel of the strandings of the patient. This is part of the International Wedding Commission. This organization is important in the conservation of the patients around the world. And currently we're looking for that kind of diseases that impact wildlife population of the patients worldwide. Two weeks ago, I started to be part of the board of the International Association for Aquatic Animal Medicine, the one that started all this history in the 1960s in the US. So it's a honor for me to be part of this uh, board and this institution. Looking back to that girl of five years old, I can only say, don't worry, your mom will not throw away the house to build that swimming pool. Thank you for trusting yourself and never give up, even if you had people telling you it was not possible, it was possible. If someone from the audience is thinking to follow their dreams, I can only say, do it. Trust yourself, no matter how crazy ideas you have. If you have the support of your family, it's okay, but if you don't, don't worry, you will make it. Find one or two mentors who are successful in their careers and join them, work with them. Surround yourself with big dreamers and positive people. Be happy and nice with the people. You never know when they are calling you back to support you or your projects. Be humble always that bring you long-term collaborations and to make your dreams come through and even greater. Thank you. Good night.